Well, 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 it turned out to be a great weekend of sports. Indiana Hoosiers went out there and absolutely dominated Charlotte. I know it's just Charlotte, but also we're Indiana. Our expectations are not set up for this. In 140 years, Indiana football is doing something that we've not seen in a long time. We'll talk about that, and we'll talk about Mike Woodson, what he said during the media day. Indiana got their official schedule, even though we knew a lot of the games and everything like that. We got the official schedule, and we'll talk about what Mike Woodson said, how how the football program is changing and turning heads at Indiana. All in this episode, let's get into it. Hello guys, and thank you once again for joining me on Indiana Sports Connection. I am your residential anchor, Aaron. Thank you so much for being here and being part of this Indiana Hoosiers and Colts community. Although we got a victory for the Colts, but we are not going to talk about the Colts much today because they are looking like hot garbage out there. No matter what, there's just not a lot to say about them, but we got a lot of excitement in the way of Indiana football. But when you turn on these Hoosiers and you watch Signetti coach this team and you see how he is putting this together, it's not really all of that. It's just a consistent level of effort and play and, and just how he's driving at home with these guys. It's very impressive. Kurt Signetti, I gotta come up with a term for this because he has this way about him on the sideline. He has this, and I don't know what it's called. I'm trying to make a shirt soon called like the staunch or the stance or something. I got to come up with a good name for it. Leave your comments down below. Tell me because Signetti, he's just got this way about him on the sideline. I can't explain it. I do love it. There's something about it. He's, he's getting it done. And I know it's easy to be, you know, this positive because they're having early success and we kind of haven't seen this in a while. We're going to talk about that, and then we're going to talk about Mike Woodson and the Indiana Hoosiers, some of the things he said, and he wasn't forced to say it by anybody, but two words that he said during that press conference that I'm just going to ask you in the comments down below. Do you buy it or do you not buy it? it there is like, I don't know if I buy it or not, but we're going to see, and we're going to talk a little bit about well, I watched him very closely when he coached in New York, and we're going to talk a little bit about that and just style of play and stuff like that just a little bit at the end of this episode. But if this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button down below. I haven't done a lot of giveaways lately. The channel kind of died once a certain part of the summer came along. There just were very few Indiana stories coming out through that summertime period. So there is a giveaway coming up at 1,100 subscribers. Also, on this video, if you comment down below and you want the basketball, if you can see the basketball over here behind me, if you want the basketball, comment down below and email me at on this video, on this video, I will give away the basketball again. And when we get to 1100 subscribers, I'm doing another home field apparel giveaway. So everybody loves these shirts. I've given away many of these shirts on the channel that helped me really to get to a thousand subscribers. So hit that subscribe button down below, share the video, whatever you gotta do, give the video a thumbs up. That really helps to get the video out to more Hoosier fans and everything like that. So I appreciate it. I haven't been doing the giveaways just because the videos haven't got as many views because football season's not been going and we're so far away from basketball season. So we're revving it up again and we're gonna start doing giveaways again and really ramping it up because now is the time. In Indiana, 4-0 in football right now. And that's what we're going to get into talking about. So, without further ado, let's get into talking about the Indiana Hoosiers. All right. So, Signetti, I got to say, I was home. I was home from work this weekend. I thought about going to the IU game, but I had a lot of stuff to do with my family. All this fall stuff. I had to get moms and I had yard work to finish up because I plugged my yard and I'm seeding and fertilizing. And then it was going to be a perfect day. Like today was going to rain on Sunday and for a couple days. So I had to get all that stuff ready. I know I need to be more dedicated, but it's a three hour drive for me. But the game, 
when I was outside in the morning, I'm like, this is going to be a hot game. You know, you're playing against maybe a weaker team in Charlotte, which I felt bad for their coach. Man, he was struggling out there. I mean, he had to get some water bottles or something, <laughs> lose some weight or something. Man, I mean, he was just looked like he was dying a slow death. But their team <laughs> died a slow death in the second half. They came out. They really showed some fight early, Charlotte. And I thought Indiana really stayed on schedule because even though Charlotte, they showed, they had some pretty good pushback against them early on in that game. But Indiana and Rourke, he is so accurate with his passing right now. Rourke, his short passing game, and then when he lets it go deep, he puts a really nice touch on the ball and he's able to get it down the field to Surratt, Cross, another guy, Aiden Fisher on the defense. This guy is playing Aiden Fisher and Pons. And who's the other guy? Number eight on the defensive line is playing pretty damn good. He's a guy that came over from JMU, I believe. So, man, Indiana just has uh, uh, some dynamic going here now. And in 140 years of Indiana football, they've put up all these stats. I mean, Indiana has just never ever been able to have this level of success in football. So, man, Signetti, I'd like to think if I was the coach and I have a clip of him here and this is one that really shows you the mentality of Signetti and the mentality that he really relays onto his team. It's always got to be he's always seems to have the right mentality and you can get trapped into something here so hillbilly monkey let's play that clip of uh signetti talking about a self-fulfilling prophecy well yeah well you know, sometimes there's a fine line between reality and creating a self-fulfilling prophecy right you know oh they had a big win last week i hope they don't have a letdown and then you're looking for the letdown pretty soon you're finding oh, we're having a letdown <laughs> you know a dirty week i thought we had a solid week of practice and uh while we've started games better, you know, it was a solid game. So, yeah, when he said that, I mean, and I know I relay a lot of things to golf, but that, that really did make me think of golf where, because this has happened to me playing in some high-level tournaments where I thought, did I prepare well enough? Did I do this? Did I do all the things? And, you know, you get out there in a, in a pressure-filled situation and you can kind of lose your mind. You can kind of think, wow, this is what's happening to me mentally and I'm trying to block it out and I just, I can't do it. I'm somehow distracted. He also did talk about that in the press conference. Distractions, no distractions going forward leading into these next games. I know they play Maryland next and then we'll see. I mean, a lot of people are saying it's going to be Michigan and Ohio State are going to be the big games for Indiana if they could... Keep it close. And Michigan had a big win over USC. They really showed something. And Michigan fans, I think, were really real. And they really needed to win that home game to kind of keep themselves happy as Michigan fans. But Indiana, I'm just going to take it for what it is right now. And we'll just see going forward. Could it be good? It could be bad. But I love what I see out of Signetti so far. Hey, let's talk a little bit about Mike Woodson. And we got some clips of him during the media day and everything like that. We're going to play some clips of Mike Woodson. So, hillbilly monkey. So, one of the first questions, and I know Mike Woodson just really hates Jeff Rabjohns. I don't know why. And, uh, boy, like let's play this question by Jeff Rabjohns right here and also let's count how many times does he say the word work in here and I know Kent uh, Sterling highlighted this on his show as well but I was thinking the same thing when I heard him give this long-winded answer about put a counter up there hillbilly monkey and let's play that clip let's roll it yeah Mike um, last year you mentioned a lot just how new you all were even you know around like mid-January with so many new faces this year I'm wondering what you feel like you learned last year as far as maybe easing that acclimation process well again uh you know, I, I don't really want to focus on last year because it's behind us and, you know, I'm moving forward um, and kind of focus on the players that we have coming in this to this season. Um, 
you know, this summer was a lot of work that we had to put in because we we had six guys that left our ball club. One to the draft, two that graduated, and, and three to the portal. So there was a lot of work that had to be done this, uh, this summer uh, to fill our, our roster. And uh, I thought we did a pretty good job in uh, putting a roster together. Uh, our summer play was great. Uh, guys were on time and did what was expected of them. And, um, and it's been a carryover to our fall play. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, man, when you add pieces and, and all the things you got to do on both ends of the ball uh, to get better. It's, it's a lot, it's time consuming and a lot of work has got to be done. So there you go. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. All right. So do you believe in Mike Woodson? I mean, that is really what it comes down to with this team. The media, the rankings, um, Bart Torvac's rating has him at 31. So do you believe in Mike Woodson? Can he put this together on this team? Next, many people in the comments, when we were first getting all these players, it really wrote Gabe Cups, Cups off entirely. And, you know, let's just roll this clip. Here, Billy Monkey, let's roll the clip. Well, he's had a good summer program. Uh, he played well throughout the summer. And he's come back this fall, and he's played He's played well. He's, he's holding his own. He's competitive. He's a, a kid that likes to compete. Uh, he's one of the first kids in the gym and one of the last to leave. So, um He's going to be in the thick of things. He's going to force coach to have to play. I mean, that's that's what it's about, competition. And, you know, we got plenty of it now. So there you have I mean, Cups is workaholic. He, you know, has the breakfast club. He's there at 5 a.m. every day, lifting weights, getting his shots up, doing all this stuff. Sounds like he's working his way onto the team. I mean, at least into some type of a starting role or he's going to force the coach to play him and – you want guys like that that are going to push push other guys. Um, as a freshman doing that, you know, maybe some people are just not going to follow your – but as, as having a guy who has experience and he's the guy doing that could be a real good leadership type – guy going forward for this team so you always got to look at that long term because i always i still do love i mean the four-year players are my that's your bread and butter if you're an indiana fan right i mean the guys that stay four years like yogi farrell whatnot i mean they're the ones that and trace jackson davis the ones we remember forever all right so he talks about Mbako making a big jump yeah. it's all about growth man you you make a jump there's always another jump in basketball that you got to try to reach and you know he's played well this summer you know he's improved from last year uh it took him some time you know I, which we thought it might take him some time and and once he started to figure out some things he became a pretty good player for us um but this summer he's made another jump and which i expect you know him to make that jump so only time will tell uh, with all of our guys when we start playing uh, where we go with our ball club. So, yeah, I've heard Mbako has been working out with NBA guys out in California or something like that. That's all I really know. I've seen it on Instagram and a few places, and that's great for him because he needs to make a jump. I don't know if Mbako, what he means by making a jump, if he will be better on defense, if he plays – more on the perimeter on defense or if he's going to get better at driving the ball into the basket and finishing at the rim that's something that when he did that last year it did not always look a hundred percent fluid and i know he's a big guy but not all big guys move well dribbling the ball like that and then the clip that we've all been waiting for two words that mike woodson says and he wasn't forced to say this by anybody but he said it and do you buy it? So, you know, leave your comment down below. Do you buy it or not? Let's just roll it here. He'll be like, Monkey, does he say? Some different kind of wrinkles with what you might want to try to do this year? Well, I'd like to get to some small ball this year, like I'd had in New York, uh, where Mac and Goody can play some four. 
and we can still be athletic enough out on the floor with one of the bigs to compete at a high level. And I, I've experimented with it a little bit this summer in the fall play, and um, and only time will tell, man. I mean, that's that's where I like to get to, you know, where we don't have to constantly pound the ball a lot. Let's play, play some small ball and get up and down the floor. So, so small ball, and let's talk a minute if we buy this or not. I'm going to tell you, Mike Woodson. In my opinion, and in a lot of people's opinion, he was forced out of the NBA in 2014 because he would not adapt his style of play to a more modern style of basketball. That is why he was really pushed out of the NBA. Um, I lived in New York, and when, when and I know I've said that many times, but I watched nearly every Knicks game. And I used to bartend and used to just talk a lot of Knicks basketball with people. His own stubbornness is what has forced him out of these positions. Now, he had a soft landing spot kind of here at Indiana because he knew people here. And so he had an opportunity to come here. And he's our coach. And I don't want anything better than for this team to win as many games as possible this season. But do we buy this? He said this on his own. There's no reason for me to really buy it. He has somewhat designed the team the way that you'd think that they would shoot more threes and that he would shift Goody and Mbako down to the four and play them with Renew some because you got Balo as a player that just can't play over 25 minutes a game. So you got to take that into account. Could be a real disaster if he tries to play Balo 30 to 35 minutes and he gets this guy completely gassed by the end of games. So his hand, is his hand going to be forced entirely? It could be. But then I've also heard him in this press conference say how, you know, Langdon Hatton, you know, is playing down low and, and things like that. If, if he's going to shift him down low and to play with Renew, then you'd kind of be back at square one. Time is going to really tell on this, and we're going to find out probably around the South Carolina game or battle for Atlantis how under pressure this team's going to play. Uh, Mike Woodson has to hit the ground running with this team just entirely. He cannot come out here and think that he has all this time to figure it out and come out with these hockey line changes where he plays like 12 guys or he's playing this seven footer off the bench, you know, that we have that won't play in any of the big 10 games. You don't have that type of time. You got to slot guys into exactly what you think they are capable of right now. I heard him say this during like how he wants everybody to be able to handle the ball. In college basketball, that is just not realistic. I mean, sometimes you just have guys that are just better at getting the ball, pivoting around, and finding somebody to pass. You you don't have, in the NBA, you have guys that just have better all-around games who can handle the ball, pass, create things on their own, and, and do it in these one-on-one -on -one scenarios. And in college, you really got to like know exactly where everybody's going to be in space and all of that and know their skills down to a T. Do you buy it? That's all there is to it. Um, there's one other thing I do want to shift back to, to talk about Kirk Signetti and something they were talking about at the end of the football game. Because just when I was watching it, Donovan McCauley came in and you know Tavon Jackson was playing. And McCauley said about Donovan McCauley, you know, he was the third best wide receiver in the Big Ten last year. You know, I didn't watch all of their games last year, like from beginning to end. They were so bad. But I just was thinking about this, that many coaches would come into a team like Indiana, like Kurt Signetti did, knowing that Donovan McCauley was, you know, their best wide receiver and one of their best players last year. It would just come into the program and almost be like, yeah, you know, I kind of got to like, cater to this guy or kiss this guy's ass or something like that. That is just not what Kurt Signetti's style is. I mean, he comes in and he knows this is what I expect. This is our plan of attack. This is what we're going to do on offense. This is what, you know, and this is what I need out of you as a wide receiver. And 
you know, maybe he was just given like the golden boy treatment by Tom Allen. And so it's a little bit harder for him to just kind of get things ramped up. You're not going to get that golden boy treatment from Kurt Signetti. And so I just thought that was really telling in his coaching style and how he handles himself in, in every aspect of the game. So that was just my final take on this episode today. Thank you so much for joining me on this Monday episode of Indiana Sports Connection. And until next time, stay classy out there, Colts and Hoosier fans.